Hey guys, it's Nick here, and uh, I just wanted to go over something that I recently discovered that makes my life a lot easier. Um, sometimes I get tasked with um, kind of demoing a website or something that's like, you know, an app or or anything that has uh, a bunch of different buttons and they all have different kind of active states. Um, you, there might be a cursor in there and, and the cursor needs to change and to make it realistic, um, it's fairly simple animation but it can get really messy with uh, all these different active states kind of matching things up and um, timing it out properly and then you get tons of layers so I found a way to kind of minimize the amount of um, you know layers and 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 timing issues that you can do with that and just it involves a simple rig um, that that just makes it a whole lot easier so I'll show you kind of how this typically goes um, I have this website and I want a cursor to hover over this button and when it hovers the cursor changes to like a hand type thing and then the button will change into you know a different style of button um, and then there's like a click stage so this is how it would normally go you know you have the have the website you have the, um, the button and uh, so I'm going to drop a cursor in there I've already made these um, fairly simple, a little big, so I'm going to scale it down, and I'm just going to get my animation right, so probably just for this example, kind of start over here, go uh, 10 frames out, position, 10 frames out, go over to the button, And go maybe hold it for three frames, three or four frames, and then ten frames out, move away. So now we have our cursor. It's pretty fast, so I'm just gonna stretch that out. Alright, so what we have is really simple, but it doesn't look very realistic either because, you know, if this was a real button, the button would probably change to let you know that it was hovering over, the cursor would change, uh, maybe we would click it and it would have even a different look. Um, so let's get into um, just changing the cursor style. So drop a hand there and then shrink it down. I shrink it down to the same size, so go, and then I'd have to kind of match it up where where it is, and then parent it, and then I only want it to appear when it really hovers over. So probably like right here, I would have to kind of. Switch it out. And then as it moves away, I'd have to switch it back. So, you know, now I'm going to get uh, another layer. Let's duplicate it. And then I'd have to, like, stretch this layer out. And... So now it's like that and you know if this was all we were doing fine but you know if you're going to move this around to several different buttons or if you're going to change the timing it could get really ugly really quick. So let me show you how to rig this up so that we don't have those issues. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is uh, keep this all in one layer so I'm going to start a new composition. I'm going to make it 100 by 100. And I'm going to set the duration to 2. Uh, and the reason is I have two different layers that I want to switch from. So if you had kind of three different states or four different states, you would make it four frames. So basically one frame per state. 
if that makes sense. So hit OK. I'm going to drop both of these in here. So now I have my hand and my cursor. And what I'm going to do is move up one frame and move the hand to the first frame and then kind of so I have one cursor on each frame and that's it that's the uh, that's the trick in a nutshell so we'll go back we'll call this cursor rig and go back to our main comp and I'm going to just delete this stuff. My cursor rig there. And as you notice, it's, it's two frames. So I can't really do much with this. So what I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do is just kind of shrink it down because it's too big. So back to 35. That looks about right. And I'm going to time re enable time remapping. And that's going to give me the ability to stretch this out to what I want. So what we have here is two keyframes. I'm actually going to set another one here. So we have these two keyframes. And if you look at the time, it's zero is my just, you know, normal style cursor and one is the hand style cursor and I'm going to turn these into whole keyframes so now what I can do I can just actually get rid of the second one and just you know keep this one keep this one going as zero and keyframe the position the way I want it. So now I have the same simple position animation, no big deal whatever but now I can go back into that time remapping that I did and when I see it hovering over this button I can hit keyframe and hit one and it switches and then when it's off of that hit zero and now it's back Sorry, got a forgot to do one thing, which is and you gotta get the timing of this right, but the important part is that you're not shifting layers around, you can just kinda shift, you know, if you wanted this to hold longer on the on the actual thing you can just kind of shift these keyframes over and you're not moving a bunch of layers around and shifting that all around and then you can move this on to the next one you can similarly do the same thing with this button so we have button one and I have another button that I can just drop and replace so it's the same thing. It's like, you know, I have this, this layer, and once it gets here, then I want this change, and then um, changes back. And it might not be a big deal, but if it clicks, then you have this third layer, and then if it does something else, you have a fourth layer. So you can do the same thing here, um, where we create this little rig. Precompose, button rig. And uh, 
just for fun, I'll, I'll make it like a different state. So uh, let's do composition settings and we'll do three frames. So for frame zero, we have the regular state button. For frame one, we'll have this hell yeah button. And then I'm just going to do like a quick, quick and dirty third state. So uh, let's see here. Do tritone. So now we have like three different things going on. Go back to the main comp. And same thing, right click, go up to time, enable time remapping. Now you can turn them into Hold for keyframes, sorry. So it's right click, toggle hold keyframe. Then you can kind of match them up with your other keyframes. One. And we'll assume that right here is where they click, so we'll do one to two and then back to one that's probably pretty fast so let's just drag that out and then once the cursor moves away it's no longer active so we can flip it back to zero You didn't, even, you didn't even catch that one, so that's that's a little fast, but that's the flexibility is that we can just play around and whatever looks good, it's just kind of pulling keyframes apart and it's all in one layer. And that's it, and it's it's two layers so we can do whatever we want with those you know and it's always going to just be two layers cool thanks for watching and i hope this helps you out and makes your life a little easier